YouTube and welcome back to the channel. I've received several requests to make this video, so today we'll be looking into spiral candles. You've probably seen them before and wondered how the heck they work. I know I have. Well, most spiral candles are basically a combination of a hurricane shell and a container candle. But what makes them special is that inside a thin wax shell that constitutes the outer body of the candle, there's a wick that, when lit, slowly melts down the shell in a downwards spiral fashion. Now, the candle I'm making for this video is a two-in-one candle. So when that first length of wick has done its job, you're left with a second candle in the middle that you can light and burn further. A word of warning before we start, there are different types of spiral candles around and the design of most of these is patented. So it's okay to explore how they work and make one for your own personal enjoyment, but it's more than probably not okay to make these candles with the intention of selling them. I made this video to show you different techniques used in candle making and not as an invitation to infringe on anyone else's patent. Okay, let's start making the shell. For that, you will need a mold and an insert. For this project, I'm using a pillar mold, aluminium, and a piece of PVC pipe as an insert. The trick here is to find an insert that will leave a space of about six millimeters between the sides of the mold and itself. Here, yeah, perfect. If you're using a PVC pipe, which is actually the easiest way since it exists in different diameters, make a small dent about seven millimeters from the edge using a saw, just one centimeter long, one millimeter deep. And this will be used to place the end of the wick so that it doesn't get completely stuck in the wax shell. I'll start by marking on the insert where the wick should stop, about halfway through. Done. And then we can start putting the wick in place. So put the end of it in the small dent you just made. And Keep it in place using glue wax. Glue wax is a special wax that's very, very tacky, but it's still wax, so it's not toxic to burn like glue would be. Place the wick at about 7 millimeters from the edge of the insert. and use small balls of glue wax to keep it in place at different positions. When you arrive at the place where the wick starts, start going down. And always make sure you leave about 15 millimeters between every section of the wick. If you don't keep that distance, there's a risk that one section of wick will actually burn the next one before it's its turn. So go down in a spiral fashion, always leaving 15 millimeters between the different sections of wick. and continue until you get to your mark that indicates where the wick stops. Again, use glue wax to keep it in place and make sure the wick is regularly spaced.
use enough glue rocks to keep the wick in place, but just don't overdo it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's see if it fits. Yep, perfect. Okay, I'm using a pillar mold that's got a weak hole. And because we're making a shell, I'm just going to plug the hole using a little bit of mold sealer, like that. And for this project, I'm using a paraffin blend that's made of 70% paraffin wax, 30% stearic acid. There you've got it melting away in the double border. So I'm gonna start by pouring a small layer of wax, like two millimeters at the bottom of the mold, and then insert my contraption. That wax, that small layer of wax will act as a sealant. Just push the insert down and give it a minute or two, give the wax a minute or two to, to set. When that's done, you can pour the rest of the wax in the space between the insert and the mold very slowly because you don't want to dislodge the wick. And normally that first layer of two millimeters is enough to prevent the wax from going from the side of the mold to the inside of the insert. When the wax starts to set, as usual with the pillar candle, you create some release holes and then top up to make up for the shrinkage. There you go. Now gently tap the sides of the mold to make sure that any air bubble trapped in there under the wick, for instance, will go back to the surface. And when that's done, give the shell about 12 hours to set. When it's set, use a pair of pliers and remove the insert, first rotating it slightly and then pulling it up. It should come out without any problem. And there you've got it, a perfect wax shell. Now remove the mold sealer, apply some pressure on all sides of the mold, and normally your shell should come out pretty easily. Super, you can see that that first layer of wax is still at the bottom of the shell. So you want to remove that using a knife. Work slowly to avoid damaging your shell. There you go. 
No. Do you want to remove the excess of wax? Again, using a knife. And free the end of the wick. If you made a small dent in the PVC of the inserts, that should not be a struggle. There you go. That's the end of your wick. Gonna do some more cleaning up. It's much better. Now I've used the whole height of the mold to make the shell, but we're gonna get to it of the last centimeters. That's where all the shrinkage has happened and it's not really nice to look at. So put the insert back to avoid breaking the shell and then use a knife to remove about one centimeter of wax. Don't worry if it's a bit rough, we're going to use the hot plate method to make it nicer in a moment. Okay, done. Now, as you would do to level the base of a pillar candle, use a small pan covered in aluminium foil, put it on your hot plate, and then place the base of the shell on it, keeping it perfectly level. And this will, this will level the base of your wax shell. Okay, it looks pretty good so far. The next step is to turn it into a container candle. Get some paper, like a sheet of A4 paper and wrap it around the base of your shell. Keep it in place with some sticky paper. This will prevent your wax shell from losing its shape when you're gonna pour the container wax inside it. Go. So place it on a sheet of wax paper and when your container wax is ready, let it cool off as much as you can. I normally wait until the wax starts to get really cloudy. Now you will need a thin brass tube. You can find that in almost any DIY store. and use some baking spray or some mold release spray. To grease it, like that. This brass tube is an opening of about just over one millimeter, which is perfect because if you insert a wick, that's normally a bit warped. It will just stay there all by itself. When that's ready, pour a small layer 
of about two millimeters of container wax at the bottom of your shell. You don't need to contain it, it's gonna set pretty much right away. And put the wick in place using the brass tube. Then keep the brass tube itself in place using a wick holder. There you go. Now give the wax a couple of minutes to set and just as we did with the shell, it should be enough of a seal to prevent the wax you're going to pull now from going everywhere. So fill the shell up to just under where the wick begins, about one centimeter under where the wick begins. There. Give it time to set. And then gently, by first rotating it, remove the brass tube. This leave the wick in place. And now all you have to do is do a small ripple to fill the hole and just smooth up the surface of the container wax. Again, very cool wax there. Perfect, and when the wax is set, you can remove the paper sleeve. And there you go. Your spiral candle is done. Now all you have to do is light it and watch it burn. There you go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos in the future. Thank you for your attention and hope to see you soon. Bye.